Johnny Mac with your Friday Daily Comedy News. Comedy's at its best when it's reacting to the moment. And the late night show sure did that. A lot of serious news around late night. We'll start with Stephen Colbert. He had a monologue written and he threw it out saying, we're taping this just a little while after Donald Trump walked into the White House briefing room, actually, and tried to poison American democracy. Donald Trump tried really hard to kill something tonight. If you did not know that Joe Biden was getting close to 270, Donald Trump just provided all the proof you will ever need. We all knew he would do this. What I didn't know is that it would hurt so much. I didn't expect this to break my heart for him to cast a dark shadow on our most sacred right from the briefing room of the White House. Our house, not his. This is devastating. Colbert called on Republicans to take a stand against the president's attempt to undermine the election, saying Donald Trump is a fascist. And when it comes to democracy versus fascism, I'm sorry there are not fine people on both sides. So you need to choose Donald Trump or the American people. This is the time to get off the Trump train because he told you where the train is going and it's not a passenger train and he'll load you on it someday too. Wow, that is uh, not pulling punches there. Colbert continued saying, we're not going to show you a second of what that sad, frightened fraud said tonight because it's poison and I like you. He can suck silence. There were some jokes in the monologues last night. Um, Colbert said, by the way, if Donald Trump is right, if Joe Biden did pull the strings behind the scenes in Republican states like Arizona and Georgia while coordinating with Democratic states like Pennsylvania, Nevada and Wisconsin and Michigan and throwing in the red herring of letting the Republicans keep the Senate and gain a few seats in the White House. I mean, kudos to that level of interstate coordination. I mean, anyone who could accomplish that many things at once right now really would be the president we need during a global pandemic. Colbert said the Trump folks still insist they have a chance, which may be true, but even Republican-friendly estimates say Trump has a steep uphill battle to close the gap. And the only thing more challenging than a steep uphill battle for Donald Trump would be a steep downhill waddle. Kimmel said the race being so close in Georgia was a big surprise, but Pennsylvania, the reason Joe Biden is strong in Pennsylvania, a state that voted Republican last time, is because he's from there and they know him. It's the same reason Trump lost New York. As a longtime New Yorker, yeah, pretty much. We didn't take that guy seriously here. Jimmy Kimmel. Kimmel said at 912 on Thursday morning, the soon to be former president tweeted, stop the count. And I guess nobody listened because half an hour later, he retweeted his own tweet. Stop the count. Why are they still counting? I tweeted twice to stop it. He also wrote, stop the fraud, which should have been a note to self. Kimmel said, here's a compromise. How about they count the votes and then they stop counting the votes like the old days? <laughs> Fallon, I'm not saying Trump is in trouble. But he was just sent straight to voicemail by the My Pillow guy. That's funny. Fallon said, "Yeah, nothing is definite, but the outcome feels pretty inevitable right now." Vladimir Putin is like, "Oh well, you rig some, you lose some." Trevor Noah said he's also been urging his followers to take to the streets, so they're showing up like coronavirus at a White House Rose Garden event. That's good, Noah. I mean, seriously, I can't believe we're all terrified that Trump supporters would coordinate a civil war, and yet these guys can't even agree on a slogan to shout in the streets. Trevor said when Hillary lost, she disappeared in the woods, but Trump starts losing. He's dragging voters one by one onto the witness stand, although knowing Trump, he's probably just hustling for a big settlement. Kimmel, the Trump campaign filed lawsuits in Georgia, Michigan, Nevada and Pennsylvania. And, you know, he's serious because he sent his best lawyer who was duped by Borat into almost showing his penis on camera. <laughs> Kimmel and let the lawsuits begin. I really can't think of a more fitting ending to the presidency than him suing America. And Jimmy Fallon said, of course he's suing. I get the feeling when Trump didn't get the Christmas gift he wanted as a kid, he was like, better lawyer up, Nana. There has been a change of scenes at The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon. This made pretty big headlines Thursday late in the day. Now, you, if you listen every day, you know I uh, at one point thought Fallon's writing was like super weak and hacky. And kind of over the summer, I was like, wow, Fallon's jokes have been on point. So that's why I'm particularly interested in this story. Head writer Rebecca Drysdale is exiting her role on the show. I believe she's been with the show seven months, which that timeline would kind of match where I thought the show got funnier, at least as I read the jokes here every morning. In a Facebook message obtained by the Chicago Sun-Times, Drysdale explained it was a mutual decision after both parties agreed she was not a good fit for the show. She took issues with writing jokes about President Trump, saying that in her view... Making fun of the president only serves to amplify his power. Her quote, I believe that comedy is a powerful tool. I believe that it can handle anything, no matter how unfunny. I don't believe that making fun of this man, doing impressions of him or making him silly is good use of that power. It only adds to his. I'm making the decision for myself to never work on, write, or be involved with another Trump sketch ever again. 
I have landed in several jobs and situations over the last few years, not just The Tonight Show, where the project of making fun of Trump or doing material about Trump has led to divided creative teams, anxiety, tears, and pain. I can't decide the outcome of this election, but I can make the choice for myself to vote him out of my creative life. Yes, she had joined seven months ago as head writer, and her previous credits include The Big Gay Sketch Show, Key and Peel, Baskets, and High Maintenance. Mark Marin is the guest on The Tonight Show, by the way. And speaking of The Tonight Show, the Interrobang um, started writing about this show called There's Johnny. So let me give you the history here. Paul Reiser created it. The show blends fact and fiction, mingling actual Tonight Show with Johnny Carson footage with a scripted storyline out of the 1970s. A young Nebraska boy mistakes a standard response to a fan letter as a job offer, hops on a bus to go work for Carson. Once he's in L.A., he manages to get such a job. And we get to see the backstage of The Tonight Show through his eyes. Now, this thing isn't new. It was supposed to premiere on CISO, which was NBC's comedy streaming platform, like, I don't know, five years ago? Then this thing aired on Hulu without proper promotion, says the article, and it barely got noticed. I didn't notice it. So now it's going to be on Peacock, and Paul Reiser's hoping people will actually watch it this time. Reiser said it's almost as if it's a new show because nobody saw this. It set the record for the least promoted show in the history of television, and it always killed me because it was so good. I was so proud of this. It came out so well. So that sounds pretty cool, but the thing that sucks is if it's ready in the can, like even if it's awesome, there's got to be, what, six, eight, ten, a hundred episodes? How many there are? There's probably a number like eight. And then it's over, right? So for me, it's hard to get attached to such things. All right, I got some Chappelle news after the break. Eagle-eyed watchers have noticed there's one episode of Chappelle's show missing from streaming services. Netflix and HBO Max have added Chappelle's show. The missing episode includes one of my favorite sketches, The Internet and Moment of Life of Little John. This sketch from February 2004. It feels like yesterday. One of the sketches is If the Internet Was a Real Place. In the sketch, Dave Chappelle visits a physical manifestation of the Internet, and he's led through an increasingly lurid and perverse world by porn star Ron Jeremy. Jeremy repeatedly asks Chappelle if he wants to see him have sex and then invites Chappelle to watch Paris Hilton's sex tape. Uh, The article then recounts some of the details of that tape and some of the very, 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 very serious accusations against Ron Jeremy, which I don't feel like reading to you here. You can Google those for yourself, but they are horrible and quite serious. So that is the speculation as to why that episode is not streaming right now because of the participation of Ron Jeremy and the content in the Ron Jeremy sketch. You will not be upset about this. From the rap, NBC has pulled Connecting from the prime time lineup. Remember Connecting? No, you don't. (laughs) <laughs> that was the hey there's a pandemic let's make a sitcom out of it yeah it'd been airing thursdays at 8 30 it has been pulled they'll bounce that to peacock and pretend it's new it was drawing uh, a 0.3 rating all right tomorrow uh, i have already recorded it we'll talk about letterman a lot i've got a lot of news from during the week uh, we'll also talk about Moonbase 8, which is a show on Showtime that's getting a lot of good buzz. On Sunday, I'm going to use an episode I had recorded way back about It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Um, I just want to clear that one out. Plus, I could use a little bit of a, a break here. And, you know, we still don't know who the president is as I record this at 747 on Friday morning. So a lot can change. So that's the weekend. And then uh, Monday should be a normal episode. Back at a normal time, I try and publish these things at 5.30 a.m. Eastern. So they're there for you for your morning run or your breakfast or if you like such a thing. Uh, But a couple days here where the episode has been going out later because I've been waiting for the late night shows. Thank you for listening. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Follow on Spotify. See you over the weekend.